Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Tuesday morning. Got a big show lined up. But first, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical. High today is going to be 80. I got 86 and low 76. But the big news again is the water temperature has shot up to 87 degrees. Now, this is fascinating. We went on another trip Saturday on the Seminole wind, and we caught a big wahoo, a 56 pound wahoo, and got back to the dock. And I went to St. Andrew Dock, then went over to Captain Anderson Dock, checking out everything. and. And uh, there were three or four wahoos that I saw personally that were been brought in. And that goes right to what we're talking about. That water temperature brought them in. And sure enough, they, you know, they, they got, some of them got caught Saturday. So we'll talk more about that later. But, uh, you know, a lot of times I, some people think I overemphasize the water temperature, but it's so critical as what's going on. And you see the results on a, on a weekly and daily basis sometimes. So that's why I talk about it so much. All right, let's look at our river readings. I probably go to Blunstown. It look, it's looking good at a 4.3. And it's pretty steady, it's, and, and ironically, the Choctahatchee at Caraville is also a four point, it's actually a 4.8. Both, both rivers are just really uh, level off and looking good for the whole week. So nice weather, but a little warm. You want to fish early on the river if you can. If you're going to fish late in the day or in the middle of the day, get up in one of those saloons and get some shade trees. All right, tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Looking at a day's tide, today is June the 14th. And we're in neat tides, just, uh, yesterday was neat tides, but coming on up the next couple of days, we have some good strong tides coming up, okay? Marine forecast, west at 10 to 15. And the last couple of weeks, last two weekends, it has been slick calm. As a saying, uh, water, water is slick and the fish are thick. And that, that's how it's been the last uh, couple of weekends out here. So let's take our break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's get caught up on our pictures. It was a fabulous weekend here on, on the Gulf Coast here in Panhandle, up in the woods and on the water. So let's get started. We're going to start off with a sunset picture. I get a lot of these. I don't show a lot of them because I get so many of them. This one, uh, this is good. This is off Deer Point Lake now. Uh, one afternoon last week, this is uh, shot by Zeb Schofield. Uh, Zeb is a good fisherman. Fish at Deer Point Lake a lot, but that's a pretty sunset right there. I know that just makes it special when you get something like, like an added bonus, icing on the cake. All right, let's get in some of these uh, red snapper. How about Debbie Lumley? Oh, nice. That's a great eating size red snapper there. Adria Barnes. <laughs> Adria got a big old smile. Adria's one of my former students. She's about, I think she's finished law school now. I don't know if she's working for these folks, but they all went out. The other day, Adria is a good outdoor girl, and good to see her. I haven't seen her in a while. Good to see that big smiling face. Talking about having a lot of people now. This is over in Destin at Crab Island, and and they used to be um, seriously. I can remember one of six or seven boats there on a the weekend, and you see what it is now almost all the time. And it's just uh, we just have a lot of folks here, and just be aware of it. And when we're talking about game laws and not having having limits and all, this is a big reason we have limits and everything. And not that they're fishing, they're just out, that group right there just having a big party. But that, you know, a lot of people out there are fishing, though, okay? Let's jump back to Lynn Haven Bridge. <laughs> this is uh, Kenton Robinson who put us on Panama City Fishing, some drum, a nice drum off of the Lynn Haven Bridge. He's facing, uh, he's facing west right here, looking back toward Lynn Haven. Uh, good drum there, big, big, yeah, that's some uh, big fish right there. All right, let's get back another good local fishing trip. Uh, we're looking at Clay Patrick. Well, uh, just, uh, just a good trip right there. Good job. Nice one there. Melissa Phillips. Okay, she and Adria were uh, fishing on this trip together. I believe they're the same trip. Her uh, dad's Moon Phillips, Uncle Charlie Phillips. I coached uh, those fellows and had Melissa in outdoor ed. So, and she had a big old smile. That, that's a nice size red snapper. She caught the biggest one on the trip. I think that runs in the family. Good outdoor folks there. The Phillips family. Okay, Kenny Bostick. My uh, son-in-law took him out, out uh, Todd Burke took him out, took Kenny out. And oh, Kenny's, Kenny's been on the show before. Just got back from Missouri from his turkey hunting, spending time up there and get to jump back down here and catch some nice red snapper. Good job, Kenny Bostick. Uh, on the far right, Captain Jerry Anderson and his daughter, lovely daughter, Lisa Anderson, right there. That's a, a great picture, some quality red snapper. I just got, this is special to me because Jerry Anderson's dad, Captain Virgil Anderson, was 
he was just, uh, when I did my book, he was so helpful. I interviewed him when he was 92 years old, and he lived to be like 94. And uh, the Anderson family right there, some thir third and fourth generation fishermen. All right, good job there, the Andersons. <laughs> Greg Gladden. Greg's been on the show before, a uh, Mosley baseball player, played college baseball. And Greg loves to fish. And you see this happens. Uh, now, that right there is a big shark bite. You see, it's a clean. See how clean the cut is. That that was a huge snapper right there. But that was one chomp from that shark right there. And that was Saturday. Uh, good job, Greg. Well, I guess a good job. Good job you didn't get bit. But he got a big old smile. All right. This is on the trip I was on Saturday. In fact, this is what I, I, uh, my Sunday family dinner. We had some grilled wahoo. Okay. This this was a great trip. I had a video coming up later. This is Mac Mac C. He was a groom. Uh, the, we had a my um, best buddy from high, one of my good buddies in high school, uh, his, his son Mac, he got married and uh, brought the wedding party, the, the grooms and all on the boat. So talk about this trip on the, on the right now is Tyler and Nakay, the deckhand. That was a 56 pound wahoo, great tasting fish, great fighting fish, but I want you to look how calm. Now we're about right there, we're about 18 miles out. <laughs> it was like that all day long. All right. And it, it's warm weather, brought in some sailfish and a good fisherman here, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Thomas, uh, Mark Thomas, and those boys—they uh, all catch. They're all good fishermen. Uh, it takes a crew now. They caught them and they and they released them. You see them in the water releasing them. Good job there. I think Neil My Hooks is in there. Several groups, several guys. Okay, check this out. This is Davian. Okay, coach. Uh, all right, this is my neighbor Ernie Rigardio. Hey, coach. Uh, this is Davian with his 16-pound snapper. I watch the show daily. Enjoy your retirement, but keep Panhandle Outdoors going, Ernie. All right, Ernie. And then he sent it, this little granddaughter, his grandson and granddaughter, his granddaughter, Honey, caught these two tasty snappers. Kids get a kick when seeing their photos on your show, and we'll be glad to show them anytime y'all seeing this picture. So y'all keep sending them in. Look at that big old smile. That's a happy girl, and she's going to be a fisherman, fisher lady of her whole life. Uh, now, this recognize this guy. This is that's our mayor, Greg Brudnicki. They went out on a short trip. I uh, went short, didn't take a lot of time, he just caught a nice mess of red snapper. And look at old Greg right here. He, I think he caught the biggest one, look at big old grin. Hey, it just makes me feel good to see, to know that here local we have a mayor that loves the outdoors like that. Greg's a great outdoorsman, Greg Brudnicki. All right, here's a good picture here. Uh, this is, uh, I've had the Andrews family on the show before, Carl Andrews, <laughs> JC, his son JC, this is their crew. But look at it, look at his grandson right here, okay? Ten year old Wesley Tilgman catching his first snapper. And that's something to be proud of. That's a framer right there. You want to keep that picture for a long, long time. Good job, uh, Wesley. I, I, Wesley, he's got some nice deer too, okay? Here's a good trip right here. Captain Tim Edwards out of Carabell in Sea Quarters Marina. Nice trip out of Carabell. And we'll wrap it up. Let's see, I'm going to sort of read this to you. A Winston, a, a friend's daughter, Alicia Dukes, Dukes from Winston, yes, Winston, North Carolina, went fishing on my boat this weekend and caught her first fish. And AJ, they would have been legal to keep a couple weeks ago, so we had to throw them back. Also caught a nice king with a pogey under a cork on a flat line behind the boat. To the surprise, the surprise of that drag singing is always music to my ears. He tried a short body, it was a stinger treble hook on the wire. Reed, okay, Reed Smith, Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army in Niceville. And there she is, okay, good picture there. And then let's look at the, uh, here it is right here, AJ, they called and released, and there's the king right there. Nice job. All right, that's going to wrap up that picture. I told you we had a bunch of pictures. That's going from Niceville to Carabelle and up at Deer Point Lake, all over the place, all kind of fish. So uh, that's a great parade of pictures right there. Let's take our break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, as Father, we know Father's Day coming up, and we're going to uh, have a guest on tomorrow talk more about gifts. I want to show you this gift right here, okay? This is a, a tumbler, all right? It's called a corksicle, and that's not the leading brand. It's the second leading brand. It's, it's rapidly closing the gap, okay? And this is uh, out-of-the-box out of gifts right here at Hobby Lobby. Linda Lee Lawrence uh, runs uh, that place out-of-the-box is right here. So it's, uh, it's behind... Basically, the best way to find it is behind uh, Chick-fil-A on 23rd Street, that little shopping center right behind them is out of the box, right there on the end there. 
and uh, Linda Lee and her daughter Caroline. They've been, Caroline was in my class four or five years ago. Great people, just good folks. I'll tell you how good she is. She gave me this, we were in there the other day. She gave me this to give away on the show. And she wanted me to mention it to her. But here's the key to why this is going to be one of the best selling items for Father's Day. It, of course, you know this, how popular all these are. I won't call out a leading brand, but everybody knows there are a lot of people have them. This is, this is better in design because I'll show you why. It's flat on the edge, right here. You can see it right here. That's flat, okay? That's flat right there. So when you reach down and grab it, you got something to grab onto. Uh, that is a good design. That's good engineering. And I really do like this. In fact, I'm going to give this one away, but I'm going to give me one also later. But it's called a cork sickle. There's a the brand name, cork sickle. Great Father's Day gift. Uh, there, uh, you can get, like I said, I told you how to get there. Tell Linda Lee you saw it on Panhandle Outdoors. Uh, uh, her daughter Caroline, uh, just good, good folks. I've known the family forever. And uh, go run by and, and get some, they got all kinds of stuff. Now, listen, guys, it's sort of a girl store, but they got a few things. My book is there, by the way. Uh, they have my book right now for Father's Day. They have this book, and they have some of these tumblers, for, ladies, for, to get your husband for, uh, you're going to get him something for Father's Day. So, anyway, cork sickle, we're going to give it away. Let me see, Let's, who's going to win this cork sickle right here? Nice, I wish I could win it. Okay. Jeff over here won't make all his name out. All right, and the winner is uh, Winston Chester. Now, how about Kendra Spencer from Altha? Okay, the Spencer family up there at Altha. Good, good folks up there, and uh, you have a nice gift to, to give to someone in your family who's a father. That is nice. So come down here to Fox 28 Studio, and, uh, and we'll put your name on it right here. So check that out. Now, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a nice one, seriously. Now, getting back to the fishing trip we had, Saturday, it was exciting, a great group, uh, and we'll, we got our fish clean. Mel Miller come and, got them, come and got them at St. Andrew, took them out of Captain Anderson's and cleaned the fish. Now, so I'm out there, and it's like a, a huge crowd, all the party boats. There were some nice fish caught, even on the head boats uh, Saturday. There were some nice fish being, so you can, it's wall to wall people getting the fish clean, and Mel let me get back there with them clean, and I'll have some video later, but he said, hey, you got, about halfway through there, it takes about 45 minutes to get all the fish clean, and and, uh, and that was fast. But he said, you need, this came off your boat. One of the red snapper, okay, you see right here, one of the red snapper on our boat had a tag. Now, you can't read the number. You couldn't hardly, I had to go home and wash it off good. It's got uh, my FWC, okay, it's got a number. This was a tagged red snapper. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to send this in to, to Tallahassee to my FWC, I'm gonna go. I don't even know. I haven't been. It, I haven't done it yet. I'm gonna go online to my FWC and see how you turn in a, a tag for a red snapper. Send it in there. They're gonna, they're gonna let us know. They'll let me know when, where that when that snapper was tagged, where it came from. We know where it was caught. About 30 some miles off off Panama City, uh, south of Panama City, south southwest of Panama City. So that's gonna be interesting to follow. Okay, a snapper tag. Okay. Now we want to. Like I say, this summer we want to get on the road uh, pretty soon, uh, Next, maybe not next week or the week after, but sometime this summer. Our first stop, uh, is going, we're going to call this little segment POR. It's an acronym for Panhandle Outdoors on the Road, P-O-O-R. So we're going to be poor this summer like we have been all summer. School teachers have always been poor in the summer, so we're going to continue that tradition. So we're going to, our first stop is going to be the Funiac Springs. So I want some of you folks up there to watch the show. What I like to do, meet on meet at lunch one day, 11-ish or 12-ish at, at a local place. We don't want any chain or anything. We want like a local cafe, little local where all the locals go, and we'll just hang out. We'll get us a hamburger or whatever they got, a hot dog, and just sit around. Uh, have lunch with me and all, and love to uh, visit with some of y'all. And I'm going to bring some decals. I'm going to bring some decals to give away. And also some folks asking about these new caps. Uh, they're not, I, I, I'm going to get some more. I ordered a dozen just to see how people like them. We've got some good comments on them, so I'll have some caps for sale, but uh, and maybe some shirts, whatever. Anyway, I'm not going up there to sell stuff, but I will give you some, I will just want, I'm going up there just to meet some folks face-to-face, -face personal, okay? So we'll start that segment next week or week after. But y'all call me and let me know a good place to eat up there in the Funiac Springs, okay? Now, now we got a little, we got a little one-minute video. We don't usually have one this short, but the reason it's short because of the content of it. We were talking about Saul's Creek the other day. Gail and I were down there riding around in the truck, and, and it, it's just amazing to me at, at this time of year, uh, spring through the summer, through the early fall, as the yellow flies around the river swamps. It could be Liberty County, Franklin County, or off the Choctahatchee River, they're, they're, they're bad. But sometimes they're extremely 
bad. And we were there the other day, riding down way back on the Saws Creek Road before I got to landing. We talked about that. Going down there, and all of a sudden, they just started coming around my truck. I slowed down, and it was like kamikaze planes. I mean, they were just coming in all over the place. In fact, I turned the motor off, and you could hear them boom, boom, hitting the side of the truck and hitting the windows. It was like, like, you know, the big heavy raindrop, boom, 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 on top. They were just running into it. And it just, and I asked Gail, I said, honey, get a, get a camera out and see if this will show up. So you're going to see, this is a little one minute video of a bunch of yellow flies. I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, three or four hundred on her side and then on my side over here hitting my window, even on the windshield. And I, I just, it's just fascinating. So I thought you'd be, uh, I, we were glad we were inside the truck and we did not get outside at that point in time, but I thought you'd be interested in this. So Jeff, let's run this little short video. Welcome back. Now, isn't that amazing? Of course, video does not do it justice as the, the intensity of them and also the, how many were in there. It was just, they were all over the place. And uh, I, I just thought, I thought y'all would enjoy that. And you see, when I talked about these primitive boat landings, why, why they're sort of isolated and all, that's one of the big reasons folks ain't gonna get out there too much. But really what you do, you just wrap up, cover all your skin, and then, uh, you know, get a little bit of stuff on your hands and, and around your neck and all. So, uh, it, it, you know, we, people fish with them and all, but they're, they're thicker than, than most people realize. Let's look at a fishing game time brought to us by Barron's Barbecue Shrimp Marinade. And it is today, it is 821 to 1021 this morning and this evening uh, later on about 842 to 1042. And I've been getting some uh, um, uh, preliminary reports on, on early uh flounder season. They're, they're gigging a few, but not a whole lot. Okay. Speaking of reports, now this is going to be a peer report. Okay. Bill Angevine's good. I'm going to just read it to you what he sent me the email. Okay. He said a few kings, a few kings at daybreak. And that, that goes to show you, we always talk about fishing early. A few kings at daybreak. Uh, they landed three or four, uh, some too small and some hardtails. The midday bite was the best. Okay. Uh, it wind turned, what happened, the wind turned around and came out of the south and they got a few kings and some nice Spanish between 1 to 4 p.m. Bunch of hardtails and, uh, and uh, some more Spanish. The baits of choice, the baits of choice were cigar minnows uh, for kings and Spanish, spoons, gotchas and bubble rigs for some smaller Spanish as well as uh, for the blues and hardtails. So that's from Bill Angevine. Then it said, this is a Sunday, uh, that was on Friday, this is on Sunday, they got uh, between one to five today, uh, they got 25 kings, okay? Sunday, well, that's when that warm water started coming through Saturday and Sunday, and also some tarpon were hooked as well. So that's a good report. Bill Angelvine, he, he goes out there about 200 days a year. It's amazing at, uh, at, at uh, how often he goes out there, okay? We ha uh, also had some... Uh, the Florida Fish and Game, uh, FWC, uh, they're going to do, this has been interesting, sort of been on the back burner lately, but it's going to pop back up on, on the bear hunts and what they're going to consider. They're going to consider four options. I'm, I'm going to just tell you what the four are. Option one, for, okay, option, option one, they're going to have a meeting on this to get feedback, of course, but on the bear hunting. Option one, or do, do identical as what they did in, 
in 2015. They have the same hunt, okay, to option one. Option two, have a more conservative bear hunt, okay, uh, more conservative, which would be a smaller season and less numbers. That's option two, okay. Option three is postpone it completely for the year, for this year, and wait until next year, okay. That's the third option. And option four, no bear hunting in Florida, okay. So it was going to be, uh, they could repeal the laws and all that. So you have, you have four options uh, facing the uh, Fish and Wildlife Commission, and it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, they get heat from all sides, and, and uh, they got to consider, uh, first of all, the, the biological data, uh, uh, the, the surveys they do. you got to go by that, uh, the safety of the public, uh, and also you don't want them over, overshot and all that. So it's, it's a lot to be considered, and it's going to be interesting how, how this unfolds. And it just... Uh, a lot of it has to be done uh, in, in a framework uh, that, that is, you know, the studies are done, the information's in there, and then they present it to the public and get the public input, and that's how that happens. All right, we're going to talk uh, a lot about scholars the next couple of days and see what, you know, what's going on there, and, and they, they're going to make decisions and all, but, you know, there have been recommendations that are just not a scallop. So I, I showed that picture earlier of all those boats over there in Destin to just give you an idea again of how many people are now on the coast here in the panhandle and in the woods here in the panhandle it's not like it used to be it's just so many people out there and that's why we have the limits on the snapper and the age eight clothes and that's why you know they change the, uh, the sizes on the bass and all because we just have so many people now for taking it outdoors they can still it'll still work we still have great fishing trips and great hunting trips but we just can't go over there and catch everything we used to catch and and shoot everything that you see like, like those days. Those days are gone. And uh, if you talk to the old timers and all, they're, they're, most of those guys agree that they caught too many back then. So anyway, with that being said, we've got a big show lined up tomorrow. Thank you all for watching the show today. We appreciate the viewership as always. And don't forget, if you need to give me a call now, a place to go up there and uh, eat a good lunch one day in the next couple of weeks. All right? Uh, you all have a great day today. Do something good for your fellow man, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.